Hey guys, it's Twiglets2 here, back with more Rise of Nations content for new and returning players. Today we're continuing our early build order guide, which will work in pretty much any scenario. If you missed the first video, the link is in the description, and a card will be appearing in the top right of your screen. But basically, we had just aged up into the second age. Let's get stuck in. By this point, we've already researched level 1 military, civic, commerce and science. We have two cities, a market, temple, barracks and a tower to get our defence up and running. Rather than building a third city, this guide will focus on getting granary and lumber mills up and running, so you get the most out of the two cities you already have. I'm also assuming you are able to build one of your cities near a source of metal. Our very first action is to research science level 2 to unlock your granary and lumber mill. It also makes the other library technologies a bit cheaper. While this is researching, go ahead and get your metal and knowledge production up and running by building your first mine and first university. Given that we're not building our third city yet, we need to increase our wealth gather rate as early as possible, especially at this point, so we can create scholars. Building a second market will provide a small wealth boost for these scholars. A quick tip, once you start creating your first scholar, you'll see a tiny tab with an infinity symbol on it. Click this to activate the infinite queue. This will automatically create scholars for you. Even better than that, it won't take all of the wealth up front, only when each scholar starts to be created, as long as you have the resources. By this point, we want to expand our food and wood production, so it's a perfect time to build your Senate and Research Republic. This will give you your Senator to lead the fight and slightly increase your commerce limit, which will be very useful at this point. I suggest building your Senate in your second city that's closest to the enemy to help your senator get back into the fight if he gets killed in future. I'd also recommend hotkeying your barracks by holding control and tapping F1. Then while the barracks is selected, right click on your senator. This way you can select your barracks from anywhere on the map and create units. By creating a rally point on your senator, your newly created units will automatically go to wherever your senator is on the map, reinforcing him without you having to divert your attention away from the battle. Your science level 2 research should have finished by now, so you can go ahead and build at least one granary and lumber mill, two if possible. They'll increase the output of farms and woodcutter camps of that particular city. By the time these are built, the chances are you'll need to up your commerce limit again, so go ahead and research commerce level 2. More importantly, this unlocks the ability to trade resources at the market, allowing you to smooth your resource short if you haven't got the expanded interface in the top left of the screen to trade resources, check out my expanded interface guide. It'll make things so much easier for you. The link to that is in the description, and a card will pop up in the top right of your screen now. If you haven't already been attacked by now, the chances are you will be soon. You should already have at least a few troops, and my recommendation is to prioritise archers and heavy infantry from your barracks. At your tower, go ahead and research allegiance for attrition to make it harder for the enemy to attack you. If you don't quite have the resources, see if you can buy and sell at the market to provide what you need. Hopefully your first university has maximum scholars in it by now. As knowledge is so important for aging up, you should build your second university at this point. Though, feel free to fill this one up more slowly than the first, as you should be okay for knowledge for the time being. You can invest your wealth elsewhere. For the first time in this build, we're going to start researching technologies out of order. We're going to be bold and go for science level 3 as soon as possible. Don't worry, military and civic will catch up soon. But as I said at the beginning of this video, the focus is on making the most of our granary and lumber mills before a rapid expansion to our third city, which I'll show you in the next video. Now, this level 3 science does a few things. As with every science research, it makes other library technologies cheaper. But level 3 specifically unlocks agriculture research at the granary and carpentry research at the lumber mill. These technologies should be researched as soon as possible to turn your nation into a food and wood powerhouse. It also unlocks the smelter, which is a vitally important building. Often, you will find your metal production lags behind food and wood, so getting your smelter up and running in the same city as your mine is essential. While these are building, it's a good time to check you've built as many farms as you can, and filled up your woodcutter camps and mines. Again, using the expanded interface in the top left to quickly show you how much of each resource is coming in and whether you have any farms that aren't being utilised, etc. If you're close to hitting your population cap, don't worry, we'll sort that out in a moment. Before that, get a stables down. We've waited long enough to get some cavalry together, so let's get the horses out and add them to your army. I recommend hotkeying your stables to F2 by holding Control and hitting F2. Then, as before, right-click on your senator to automatically reinforce him. We're nearly ready to age up, but next up is to research Civic 2. We will want our third city soon, but first it's all about researching religion at your temple to expand borders and increase your city combat range and hit points. 
I can hear you screaming at me now that you need a higher population cap, so research Military 2, which will also unlock some long-awaited upgrades for your units. Now you're ready to age up to the third age. I appreciate that this was a lot to take in. I'll leave the build list up on the screen, so you can refer back to this video, or even have it open while you play a game. Go ahead if you find that useful. There's a lot going on, so here are some reminders. Don't forget to send your merchants to rare resources. I know it's a lot to keep your eye on, but once you find a rare resource you like the look of, keep it on your screen, tap N to open up your market, then create your merchant. Right click on the rare resource to set up a rally point, then you can move on. Your merchants will automatically find their own way there. Also, try your best to keep your scouting going. Get your scout at a couple of villagers scouting around the map to get those ruins. They'll boost your resources early on, which is so useful in the early game. Finally, Make sure that throughout this build, you're finding the resources to build infantry from your barracks. You absolutely must start setting up a defense. Keep your army close to your senator, use him to bribe enemy units in friendly territory, and build at least a couple of towers to protect your cities. This video is long enough as it is, so let me leave you with some closing comments before we end for today. My first guide with a build order for the first age is going to be pretty much the same, no matter which nation you're using. However, as soon as you get into the second age, there are so many different strategies and build orders to pursue. This particular one is a defensive build, and there's a good reason for this. I think with any strategy game, while you're learning, it's best to stay defensive and learn to hold your own against increasingly difficult AI opponents. Once you're comfortable with that, then you can experiment with different, more aggressive strategies. I'll have other builds for the second age that you may find more to your liking, where stables and siege factory will be built much earlier, so you can capture your first enemy city. The limitations of this guide centre around the lack of wealth, because you don't have that third city right away, meaning you have to make do with one caravan instead of three. That's why we go for a second market, for example, to try and make up for that. It works particularly well for nations with wealth bonuses, like the British. But if you were playing online against a human opponent, for example, you may find it's not as suitable as other strategies, depending on the nation you've chosen. Give it a go, and let me know what you think. I hope you found today's video useful. If you're building towards a tough AI, then I guarantee this build order will set you up for a win. As always, please feel free to like, dislike, and subscribe for more Rise of Nations content, and I'm always keen to hear from you in the comments section below. I stream the game on YouTube and Twitch, so please feel free to drop by to discuss this awesome game. The link to my Twitch account is in the description below. Have a good day.